This movie has haunted my nightmares for years. I remember loving it so much. I would watch it over and over and over and over and over again. It was like my favorite movie outside of those Barbie movies. Oh my God, those were also a fever dream. But they would come back, this movie would come back as like a weird fever dream or every once in a while I would have like a flashback in the middle of doing the dishes or, you know, vacuuming or cleaning my rabbit's cage. You know, usually while I'm cleaning something and I'd be like, what am I thinking of? What is this that I am experiencing right now and where can I find it again? I know I watched a movie with a little girl in a red dress and she was kind of like a dick and she had to learn to not be a dick and then there was this like weird blue fairy creature that turned into a dragonfly. What am I thinking of? And I, I found it. I finally found it. The movie is called Thumbelina, a magical story and it, it is about a woman and a little girl. And the, the little girl is the main character, and she has to, she's selfish. She's a nightmare. She's a little monster. She terrorizes everybody in the neighborhood. Her mom, animals, other kids, and their parents, everybody. No one is safe from this little girl and her antics. Like, Maya is a stone-cold little monster, a total brat, and she is deemed as an impossible problem. And what do you do when there's there's an impossible problem on your hands? You visit the friendly neighborhood witch who lives just outside of the village further deep in the woods, you know? And what can I do for you, dear? Well, everyone said that you might be able to help me. She's totally not a murderer. She's totally not evil. She's genuinely there to, like, help, uh, even though she kind of does look a little evil. <laughs> and mind you, she's not the only witch in the story. There are, like, oh, fuck, uh, there's her, there's the frog witch, there are, what, three, uh, th th there's, okay, fuck, god damn it, give me a minute. Okay, I counted, and I think there are a total of five witches in this movie uh there is uh the the first witch who uh helps maya's mother by giving her a magic book there is uh the good witch angela who is you know who also helps maya then there's the t two evil witches i'm pretty sure one of them is a dude i'm not sure i don't remember but um there are the two evil witches and honestly like both angela and the evil main evil witch whose name i cannot freaking remember uh they are both like an aesthetic like i freaking love their style and then there's the frog witch who is a literal witch frog but uh yeah there are a total of five witches in the story <laughs> but what happens is uh, Maya's mother she goes to the witch in the woods gets a magic book and you know she, she, she gives her a magic book and it's just like cool it's like called Thumbelina and she's like you need to get your daughter to read this on her own you know you need to get her to read it by herself you need to get her interested in it you must read this book aloud to her. Huh? Thumbelina? Yes, that's right. Just get her interested in the book, and when you wake up, you will have a good little girl. But she must become interested in reading the book all by herself. Understand me? And then it, it, she's like, okay, cool, sure, I'll do that. And then... <laughs> Then it cuts to the first time Maya is truly introduced. And Maya comes in with her little demon voice and she's like, Mama, I have a surprise. And it's a frog. And let me tell you, she is a nightmare. That poor frog, she's just dangling this frog around by its ankle. And, you know, her mom's terrified of frogs, so not only is she terrorizing the frog, but she's terrorizing her mother with the frog, and it's just a whole mess. And when her mother eventually does convince her to, you know, get rid of the frog, Maya just throws the poor thing out the window. Like, <laughs> squeeze you? Excuse you? 
That poor froggy boy. What a turd. This this child is out of control. <laughs> but her mom uses reserve, reverse psychology and stuff and, you know, gets her interested in, you know, what the book may be about. And then it cuts to, like, after dinner and, like, her mom's reading it to her. And because of magic, she falls into a coma. And, you know, Maya, she, she suspects nothing. She doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> she doesn't know what the heck it diddly darn frick is going on. She's just doing... She just wants to read the book, and her mom fell asleep, and so she goes and inspects the book, and oh my god, I'm just, ugh. Delicate and graceful to behold. She was half a thumb's length in height and named Thumbelina. A polished walnut shell served Thumbelina for a cradle. Mm. Oh, Mama, don't fall asleep now. Tell me about Thumbelina. Huh? Oh, I don't know why I'm so sleepy all of a sudden. Let's see. Blue violet leaves were on mattresses. Mm. Huh? Mom, wake up! Don't stop now! But then she notices that the girl, Thumbelina, in the picture of the book looks exactly like her. And that's when she shrinks. And that leads me to, like, the first traumatic part of this movie, which is her screaming for her mother. Like, her calling out for her mom. It is, like, so traumatic. That is one of the main scenes that kind of stuck with me. I don't dream often, and I don't usually remember my dreams and stuff. But when I do, they're either really normal or really weird. And when this... You know, movie would come back to me in a dream. Usually I was, like, in her place. And, you know, I was calling out for my mother. I was tugging on her dress at, <laughs> at her ankle. And I was just crying. And I was just like, Mama, 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 please help me, Mama. And that is... A exactly how she called for her mom. It was traumatizing. Hey, what's going on here? Huh? Ah! Please wake up! Mama, please! Oh, please wake up! Oh, oh. Traumatizing. Oh my god. I'm traumatized. Yay! But after that, she like passes out in like a basket of yarn, probably because of the trauma. And that is when the two first villains of the story are introduced, and they are frogs. They are a married couple. And <laughs> this guy, he's just trauma the, the husband frog, he's traumatized, he is his own kind of traumatizing. <laughs> he kind of just gives me the creeps. And I don't know if it's just because he, you know, he and his wife decide to kidnap her, or if it's just to, like his little dinky mustache that he's got going on, or if it's his voice, but this frog man creeps me out. Croak, knee deep. Well it. put, dear. We can't quit looking until we find a suitable bride for our son. Looks like we finally found her. She's certainly been trouble to find. <sighs> Introductions are in order. Well, I don't want to be introduced to you. But you do. I'm certain you would want to be introduced to your future father-in-law. I'm going away! Oh! 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 Hiya! oh. But they end up kidnapping Maya, and the reason why is because they're trying to find a beautiful bride for their son, Hoppy. And, and uh, they drag her unconscious body. I'm saying that right. That's the right word. Let's pretend I'm smart. They drag her unconscious body, her sleeping form, all the way up to the window, and then they drop her out of it. And honestly, I consider that karma for her, like, throwing that frog out of the window like that was so mean i mean don't kidnap other people kids no one should be forced into marriage that's not right that is heartbreaking uh, but like 
karma and she ends up landing in a flower and she sleeps there for a while and then she falls out of it and then she gets attacked by a rat and i think that's when she meets angela the good witch and i'm pretty sure her name is angela and she has this like i said earlier she and like the other evil witch like they're both like an aesthetic but this one angela she's got like the flowery hippie aunt vibes with like literal flower petals for hair and i've always remembered like really liking her and really thinking she was just thinking she was really pretty oh my god i'm so gay but like that's when she meets her and uh yeah fun but she gives Maya these magical red shoes. Sounds familiar, I know. And uh, she tells her she needs to get to the land of South so the Prince of South can help her. And she can only use these magical shoes to help others. But again, Maya has yet to learn anything. And so she, the first thing she tries to do when Angela is gone is use uh, the magic shoes to get to the land of South. But she ends up like running in circles and gets nowhere. And that's when she meets this little blue bastard. <laughs> Have all you want, there's plenty. <laughs> Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> It's me, Noble. I'm the magic sugar fairy from the land of Sweet. Noble, the sugar shape-shifting sugar fairy who I remember the most. And I'm honestly kind of grateful that I remember him the most because he's the least trauma- Wait, never mind. He's not the least traumatizing part of this movie because he dies twice, maybe three times. I don't fucking know. But he dies twice and the movie just allows you to go on mourning his death thinking he's just gone for good and you'll never see him again. And then he- then you see him again. The first time he dies is when, uh, you know, Maya is actually kidnapped for the first time. Like, officially, successfully kidnapped by frog parents and, uh, all that. And he gets, like, thrown into, like, a river and because he's made of sugar, he supposedly melts. And then he comes back, like, forever, forever uh, f later, like, later. And then the second time he dies, he, he he's eaten by, like, the short, round witch, who I can't remember their name. I don't even remember if they're a, a dude or a, a lady. I don't know. But he he gets eaten by the, that witch when that witch is in the shape of a blue fox or whatever. And uh, that witch... Um, that witch... Fuck. fuck, 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 fuck. That witch ends up... Oh, God. Damn it, why can't I talk? That witch ends up eating him while they're in the shape of a fox. Fun. <laughs> but yeah, she's trapped. Uh, she's kidnapped and stuff successfully. And, you know, you think Noble's dead and she's just heartbroken. And that's when you meet Hoppy. And Hoppy, he's sent to go... Uh, retrieve three strawberries from the frog witch and they are cursed strawberries that will turn Maya into a frog. One will give her the heart of a frog, one will give her the face of a frog, and one will give her the body of a frog. And, you know, their plan was basically to, like, starve her until she gets hungry enough to, like, eat them on her own. And, uh, yeah, yeah, real fun. Real fun story. <laughs> but, uh... You know, he, 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 she finds out that they're cursed because, like, this grasshopper dude comes in and he's like, yo, are these, like, can, can I have one of these? I'm kind of hungry. And she's like, yeah, help yourself. Help yourself. And he eats two, I think, and uh, he gets his face turns into a frog face and then he just hops on out of there. You know, instead of helping her, but that gives her an idea to pretend that she ate one and it gave her the heart of a frog and that she wants to marry Hoppy and all that and stuff. And then when she finally gets out, like, she tricks them into letting her go with Hoppy to the frog witch and stuff to get more of those strawberries with him. And, you know, she tricks him. As soon as she's outside, she tricks him and she tries to run away. But then he's attacked, I think, by a snake again. Freaking traumatizing. Blah, 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 blah. Traumatizing. But, um, she, she, she decides to save him because that's the right thing to do. And that's really the real turning point. And even though she knows that she'll get kidnapped again, she takes him back. And it, it's after, like, they have, like, this heartwarming moment where he tells her why, why he wants to get married so young. Why are you in such a rush to get married in the first place? You're still just a boy. You have your whole life.
life ahead of you. You just don't understand. What do you mean? We frogs get married early. We don't live as long as you do. But of course, you know, she's kidnapped again and a bunch of the neighbors like try like they have like a bunch of strawberries now. Like they went and they got those strawberries ASAP and they got a bunch of them from the witch so they wouldn't run out. And they tied her to a lily pad and you know, that's when Noble appears. He tries to save her. Yay, he's alive. I'm so enthused. And uh, he tries to save her, but he can't. And a bunch of the, uh, you know, neighbor people overpower them both and try to force feed her strawberries while she's on the lily pad. And uh, that's when Froggy, f fuck, why do I keep wanting to call him Froppy? Froppy, no. But uh, Hoppy comes out, he's limping, and he's like, Mom, Dad, she doesn't want me. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, I'm saying let Maya go free. Stop trying to turn her into a frog and just let her go. I want to be with somebody who wants to be with me consensually. He is truly matured. Good on you, Hoppy. I wonder if your mother was kidnapped, dude. But one thing leads to another and, you know... Uh, Maya ends up at this house with, like, this mouse woman, and I think her name is Ruth? And for some reason, like, at this point, I even remember vaguely when I watched the movie as a kid, you know. For some reason, like, after all that's happened, I just can't trust her because in, like, not that long of a time, she was shrunken down, she was almost kidnapped once and dropped out a window, then she was attacked by a rat, then she met, like, this, uh, witch lady, and then she met, like, another, like, witch lady who tried to trick her, I forgot about, like, that, that, like, evil witch Angela tried to trick her just before she was kidnapped, pretty sure. Uh, and then she was also, like, attacked, she was successfully kidnapped, and then she was attacked by a snake along with Hoppy, and all that, and it's just not a good time. <laughs> so when this woman came around, this beautiful mouse woman, she was so hospitable and kind, and I just, I did not trust her. I wanted to, but my trust has been broken before. I have been led astray before. God. For some reason, she felt reluctant to disturb whoever lived there. Cautiously, she peeked inside. I do love my mushroom soup. But to cut things short, let's cut to the end of the movie. Like, one thing leads to another, and she, Hoppy, Noble, they all end up in the Land of South. And there are just so many characters, and the pacing is so weird, because it's an older movie, that it just, it just, it, it just feels so rushed. But in the end, she ends up, like, facing down with, like, the evil witch Angela. And I don't know her real name, so I'm just calling her evil witch Angela. And then there's good witch Angela. What the fuck ever. But evil witch Angela, she tries to spread nightmares all throughout the realm. And, you know, good witch Angela gives... Maya, the amulet, you remember the girl's name, her name is Maya, just by the way. I'm sure you know that, but like, <laughs> she ends up like fighting the witch lady, but then she almost dies. And at this point, like she, she's no longer selfish. She cares about other people's well-being. And so she tries to save evil witch Angela from falling to her death. And then it turns out that evil witch Angela isn't evil. She basically is like, oh, you've grown so much on your journey, Maya. I'm so proud of you. And then she floats up to be next to like the good witch Angela and like the beautiful space witch lesbians they are. They like float off into the sky, <clears throat> basically telling her that, you know, she, she, she's reached the end of her journey and she's a good person now. And the, that's it. That's the end of the movie. And then the narrator comes back on and he's like, now, soon, everybody forgot about what kind, what a nightmare this little girl was, because now she's kind, and it, it makes me like, if the evil witch was in on it, and she wasn't actually evil, she was just used as this, like, horrible plot device to, like, she was just used to torment her into being nice, like, was everybody else in on it? Like, what? 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 <laughs> I'd like to thank whomever may end up watching this video, and I would like to apologize for one, uh, the the canvas being crooked, the speed paint is crooked, and it's because I drew on it the wrong way. I will try to be more careful about 
not drawing on my canvas and procreate the wrong way. I would also like to apologize for the sped up parts of my voice. I hope they aren't too annoying. Uh, I just didn't want this video to stretch on too long and I like to ramble. So in parts where I felt like I rambled too much, I like sped it up. Uh, again, thank you if, to whomever, who, who, whomever may be watching this video and I hope you have a lovely afternoon, morning, day, night, whatever you're watching this, hopefully you're getting a better night's sleep than I do.